It's no wonder you hear about vitamin D supplementation often. Worldwide, roughly 1 billion people are deficient in vitamin D. And in the US alone, 42% of adults have low levels. 50% of children between 1 and 5 years are deficient, and children aged 6 to 11 have low vitamin D stores. This deficiency has brought about an era of mass supplementation. People are supplementing almost everything they can get their hands on. The problem with vitamin D supplementation, with another extremely important nutrient, excess vitamin D can be extremely harmful, can lead to kidney stones and problem with your heart. So stick around and find out what you can do right now to decrease your risk and include this one nutrient with vitamin D that will not only increase vitamin D absorption, but also solve a number of other problems you might be having, like trouble sleeping, chronic fatigue, muscle cramping, and more. I think we all know how important the sun is for vitamin D production. The sun's ultraviolet B or UVB rays interact with a protein called 7-DHC in the skin, converting it into vitamin D3, the active form of vitamin D. Many researchers believe that between the mass use of sunblock, common window glass in homes or cars, and excessive clothing, which all effectively block UVB radiation, along with people who work indoors and people who generally avoid the sun, puts them at a greater risk for vitamin D deficiency. A common narrative I've heard over and over the last few decades, the sun causes cancer. I see people on an 80 degree day doing everything they can to cover every body part from the sun and fear they're going to get cancer that instant. We need the sun, folks. Maybe not getting torched lying under the sun for hours on end, skin getting burned, but when we get burned, that is when the risk of cancer goes up. Just like anything that causes repeated irritation and inflammation, the risk of cancer goes up. But hey, do me a favor, I need your help. Hit that like button. YouTube needs to see interaction in order to get this video out to more people. Comments help too, so tell me how much time do you spend in the sun? What do you think is the most or best amount of time before it could start to become harmful to you or your body? Vitamin D, just like B, plays a whole host of different roles in our bodies. Bone health, for example. D helps the body absorb calcium. That in turn promotes strong, healthy bones. Immune system support, mood and mental health, and muscle function are a few other extremely important processes and functions this vitamin plays. We get vitamin D from fatty fish. Fish with the highest amount of vitamin D include salmon, mackerel, and sardines. I love me some cod liver, which is also an excellent source of D and A. And of course, my favorite way to get D, the good old fashioned way, the sun. Many folks don't have sun year round and supplementation becomes essential. So like anything, it's a good idea to stay within the recommended daily intake. Let's take a trip back in time, down memory lane. Prior to 1960s, there was a big push towards supplementation, kind of like now, with lots of research and testing with all sorts of different supplements. Vitamin D was one of those supplements. Research was using very high levels of vitamin D through cod liver oil to treat many different diseases, including arthritis and lupus, with some pretty good, amazing results, mind you. Folks were getting 50,000 to 100,000 or even more international units daily for months. For reference, the RDI for vitamin D is anywhere from 400 to 800 international units for both men and women. Some were getting much more gigantic doses, more than 100,000 I use, but for shorter periods of time. Because of the high doses, there were also some overdoses, but only a modest fraction of the recipients developed symptoms of excess, which says a lot about vitamin D safety. Now this is the important part about D supplementation, the part that I hope you stuck around for. Vitamin D supplementation may be harmful in the face of magnesium deficiency, and this is why. Vitamin D raises calcium levels in the blood and can cause something called metastatic calcification, which is widespread calcium deposition, and this can be harmful. Magnesium is essential in the metabolism of vitamin D, and taking large doses of D can induce severe depletion of magnesium. Plus, most of us are already low in magnesium, being our diet, the American diet, is already so low in magnesium intake. As described, because we do not have enough mag to metabolize D, it deposits in different areas. Kidneys, to name one. Heart, another and can some cause some real harm. Bottom line, if you supplement, it is suggested you also supplement mag or magnesium. But talk to your doctor about all this stuff and perhaps get a blood test to check your levels. Now on to magnesium, also extremely important. Up to 75% of the US population is deficient. Magnesium is so important. Every organ in our body requires it. If you are low in magnesium, you might have issues sleeping or even insomnia. You may have muscle cramps, muscle twitching, chronic low energy, and maybe just be in a bad mood. Sometimes the symptoms can be super subtle and you'll have no idea the problem is hypomagnesemia. One reason is so super important is because it makes up part of over 350 enzymes. For these enzymes to function, magnesium must be present. 
pretty easy to understand why you might be depleted, right? We use so much of it. Males require about 400 to 420 milligrams of magnesium per day, while females need about 300 to 360 milligrams per day. One of the challenges with getting enough magnesium is that it comes from leafy greens and veggies, something most of us just don't get enough of. I'm guilty. To give you an idea of how much leafy greens you'd need to consume to get your daily intake of magnesium, it's about seven cups of salad. That's a lot of roughage. On the cellular level, you know those 350 enzymes I mentioned that need magnesium? Well, most of those enzymes help our mitochondria function, the powerhouse of our cells, where ATP production happens. Low magnesium, poor mitochondrial performance. Also, ever heard of sodium potassium pump? Also extremely important, its main function is to pump sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. The sodium potassium concentration relationship is critical to stabilizing our cell membrane and for our neurons to fire signals. Magnesium is critical because it provides the energy for the pump to function. Without it, the pump does not pump and it shuts down. That's why you get cramps, but it can also be why something more serious like a heart arrhythmia develops. I mentioned sleep earlier and why a deficiency in mag may lead to sleep problems and insomnia. Research has shown that magnesium plays a big role in our sleep. The mechanism is not entirely clear, but it is thought that magnesium helps you relax by interacting with certain neurotransmitters, decreasing cortisol levels and increasing melatonin. You may be having trouble sleeping because you are magnesium deficient. A research study out of the Sleep Foundation found that study participants taking magnesium supplementation, approximately 500 milligrams daily for eight weeks, were able to fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, had reduced nighttime awakenings, and increased their levels of naturally circulating melatonin compared to the control group. So what can you do besides eating like a rabbit to positively affect your magnesium levels? Well, here's one solution where you can slow the rate of magnesium depletion. There are certain foods we eat that deplete our magnesium levels, which include eating too many refined foods, especially fructose. Drinking alcohol also depletes your magnesium levels. So try to avoid these things. Besides leafy greens, there are some foods with lots of magnesium that might be a little easier to eat. First, pumpkin seeds in one ounce, there is 168 milligrams. Almonds, one ounce is 80 milligrams. Cashews, one ounce, 74 milligrams, and peanuts, a quarter cup gives you about 63 milligrams. So magnesium assists in the activation of vitamin D. All of the enzymes that metabolize vitamin D require magnesium and without it, vitamin D does not get activated and it will deposit in certain areas of your body with the potential to cause some serious problems. But I've just given you the solution, one that can bring a ton of other benefits with it. So if you supplement vitamin D, be sure you're getting enough magnesium in your diet too. If you like this kind of information, let me know in the comments section by hitting that like button and subscribe. Nurse Chris out.